Hi guys, it's Lindsay. Welcome back to The Wandering Reader. Today I'm going to be doing my July book haul. I tried really hard in July not to buy a lot of books and I don't think I bought that many. Um, but I won one book and then I went and picked up some books in a charity shop recently. So um, I've got I think 11 or 12 books to show you today. So let's get into what books I got in July. The first book I received in July, I uh, won a giveaway on Russell's channel from Ink and Paper Blog. He was doing a, well he did a video where he was asking for books about, the recommendations for books about the immigrant experience. And so I commented with a couple on there and he said that if you commented you would be entered into his giveaway to win a couple of, or one of two signed books that he had. Um, so. I was really lucky to have won, I couldn't believe it. Um, so he sent me a copy of The Last Days of Cafe Layla by Donya Bijan. I think that's how you pronounce that. And you can see on the inside that it is signed by the author, which is really cool. It came with like a little postcard. And Russell also sent me a card, um, a thank you card, which is really, really sweet. So I'm going to read you what the inside says about this because it sounds absolutely fantastic. So it says, set against the backdrop of Iran's rich, turbulent history, this exquisite debut novel is a powerful story of food, family and a bittersweet homecoming. When we first meet Noor, she is living in San Francisco, missing her beloved father Zod in Iran. Now dragging her stubborn teenage daughter Lily with her, she returns to Tehran and to Cafe Layla, the restaurant her family has been running for three generations. Iran may have changed, but Cafe Layla, still run by Zod, has stayed blessedly the same. It is a refuge of laughter and solace for its makeshift family of staff and regulars. As Noor revisits her Persian childhood, she must rethink who she is, a mother, a daughter, a woman estranged from her marriage and from her life in California. And together, she and Lily get swept up in the beauty and brutality of Tehran. Bijan's vivid, layered story, at once tender and elegant, funny and sad, weaves together the complexities of history, domesticity and loyalty, and best of all, transports readers to another culture, another time, and another emotional landscape. I mean, that just sounds incredible. Um, I love books that are set in different countries, so this is a big plus for me. Plus, it sounds like it's gonna be about food in some way and about a family experience. I cannot wait to pick this up. I'm thinking about taking this on holiday with me in August, although it is a hardback edition. I don't really wanna mess it up. Um, but I'll think about it, but I definitely want to get to it soon because like I said it sounds incredible. The next one I've got here is Colson Whitehead's The Underground Railroad. I did originally have a copy of this on my Kindle and I still do, but um, this has just recently come out in paperback in the UK um, and I saw it for cheap in my local supermarket and I couldn't resist picking it up. I do like reading from my Kindle but I also like having physical copies of things. So especially if I think I'm really going to enjoy it and it's going to become a favourite. Um, I'm sure you know what this is about already. Um, but you know, if you don't, then this is I think about kind of like the slave experience and they're taking the idea of the Underground Railroad and making it actually a thing. Um, so yeah, it's been blurbed on the front by Barack Obama and yeah. This is like, it's weird because I think American books do this whole shorter um, cover and then something underneath. Um, I don't, you don't really see that a lot in the UK, but I quite like the way that this has been put together. So yeah, must get around to reading that soon. The other one that I picked up for cheap in my local supermarket was Nutshell by Ian McEwan. And I've read quite a few of Ian McEwan's novels and I really like his writing style. Um, and this one is part, I think, of the Hogarth Shakespeare retelling series. And this is a retelling of Hamlet. So it says on the back, Trudy has betrayed her husband, John. She's still in the marital home, a dilapidated, priceless London townhouse, but John's not here. Instead, she's with his brother, the profoundly banal Claude, and the two of them have a plan. But there is a witness to their plot, the inquisitive nine-month-old resident of Trudy's womb. So this is told from the point of view of an unborn child, 
which sounds really intriguing. I'll be, yeah, I'm really interested to see how he pulls that off and kind of how it all works. So, um, yeah, that's that one. I won yet another Goodreads giveaway this month. I know I'm knocking them out of the park, definitely. This one is Shelter by Sarah Fla Franklin, and this is her debut novel. And can we just appreciate this cover? It's like it on the back as well. This is an un this is an advanced reader copy, so the actual cover of this is going to be a little bit different. But I really like the way that this has been put together. So um, I got a little postcard to go with it. Um, and this says, um, early spring 1944, in a clearing deep within an English forest, two lost souls meet for the first time. Connie Granger has escaped the devastation of her bombed out city home. She's found work in the women's timber cause, and for her, this remote community must now serve a secret purpose. Seppe, an Italian prisoner of war, is haunted by his memories, but in the forest camp, he finds a strange kind of freedom. Their meeting signals new beginnings. In each other, they find the means to imagine their own lives anew and to face that which each fears the most. But outside their haven, the world is ravaged by war and old certainties are crumbling. Both Connie and Seppe must make a life-defining choice which threatens their fragile existence. How will they make sense of this new world and find their place within it? What does it mean to be a woman or a foreign man in these days of darkness and new light? A beautiful, gentle and deeply powerful novel about finding solace in the most troubled times, about love, about hope and about renewal after devastation. It asks us to consider what makes a family, what price a woman must pay to live as she chooses and what we'd fight to the bitter end to protect. So that sounds incredible um, and this is coming out on the 27th of July. So I'm not going to read it before the end of July, before it comes out, but I'm hoping to read it quite quickly after its release date so I can put a review up on my channel. So perhaps it'll be one that I read the week after Booktubeathon. Um, but yeah, that, that sounds incredible. Then I have eight books to show you here that I picked up from charity books over the last... Charity books? Charity shops? <laughs> over the last month or so. Uh, over the last few weeks. Um, the first one I've got to show you is Annie Prowse, I think that's how you pronounce that, The Shipping News. This is almost like a modern classic. It's not a modern classic, but it's one that people talk about quite a lot. Um, and it won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction and the National Book Award and the Irish Times the International Prize. So this says on the back, Coil? Qu Quoil? I don't know how you pronounce that, sorry. Is a hapless, hopeless hack journalist living and working in New York. When his no good wife is killed in a spectacular road accident, Quoll heads for the land of his forefathers, the remotest corner of far flung Newfoundland. With these delinquent daughters, Bunny and Sunshine in tow, Quoll finds himself a part of an unfolding, exhilarating Atlantic drama. The shipping news is an irresistible comedy of human life and possibility. So, this copy is, it's got a little bit of a mark in the corner here, but it's, um, it's quite a good copy of it, so I'm, uh, I'll be interested in checking that one out. I also found a copy of The Colour by Rose Tremaine. I got this out from the library at the beginning of the year um, because I wanted to read it as part of my Read Around the World um, challenge, um, but I had to take it back before I managed to get around to it. I'm really crap at using my library. Um, but this is um, a story about a family who have to emigrate from Norfolk to New Zealand. Um, and I think it's set around the time of the gold, the sort of like the gold rush. Um, yeah, so they moved to Christchurch and um, the husband finds gold in the creek. Um, so yeah, I've never read anything by Rose Terrain before, but lots of people talk about her as being a really good author. So um, yeah, I was quite sad to take it back to the library um, and then really uh, excited when I found a copy of it. Um, over the weekend. Next up, I'm really excited about this, I found a hardback copy of The Lovely Bones by Alice Siebold. Um, for some reason I didn't have this on my shelf and this is one of um, those kind of favourite books that I really should have a copy of. So um, this is, it's got a bit of kind of dirt down the back here but I'll, I'll get rid of that. Um, but otherwise it's in, it's in pristine condition. Um, yeah, and I love this book, so um, I can't believe I don't have a copy of it on my shelf. So I finally picked up one. Um, 
you, I'm, I'm sure you know what this is about, but if you don't, this is about a little, a, a teenage girl, I think, who's um, murdered by somebody in the town, and then it's about her, her family investigating who it was, and it's told from um, her point of view. So her name is Susie Salmon, um, and so we're hearing from, her, hearing the voice of the dead Susie Salmon, um, and it's great. So um, this is, yeah, if you haven't read this, you need to pick this up. But don't watch the film. The film was utterly dreadful, um, not worth your time in the slightest. And I also was lucky enough to find a hardback copy of Bill Bryson's Notes from a Big Country. I'm a massive fan of Bill Bryson. Um, I've read quite a few of his travel books and I read his um, Shakespeare book earlier on this year. And he's just got such a lovely writing style. He's so witty and humorous and it's just such a pleasure reading his books. Um, I read Notes from a Small Country, um, I think a couple of years ago now, really enjoyed that. This is his one about America. He uh, moves back to America with his family and there, I think there's a newspaper asked him, asked him to write a column about being American or something like that. Um, and yeah, an old friend asked him to write a, a weekly dispatch um, from New Hampshire and um, first of all he turns them down but then uh, this book is basically a collection of all of those weekly dispatches in that newspaper so yeah I'm looking for this is a really nice hardback copy of it um, so yeah I love a bit of Bill Bryson so that would be a good non-fiction book to pick up soon. Then I also found a copy of um, 13 Minutes by Sarah Pimbra. This is a YA thriller and I've seen quite a few of my students reading this and was intrigued by it. Um, and I'm not, I don't think I've read many YA thrillers. Would you class We Were Liars as a YA thriller? Maybe. I didn't think much of that. Um, but yeah, uh, this, is, um, this was published I think at the end of last year. Let me just double check. 2016, yeah. So it's a fairly recent, um, recent release. Um, and this says on the back, I don't remember how I ended up in the icy water, but I do know this, it wasn't an accident. They say you should keep your friends close and your enemies closer, but sometimes it's hard to tell them apart. My friends love me, I know they do, but that doesn't mean they didn't try to kill me. 13 Minutes is a gripping murder mystery about people, fears, manipulation and the power of the truth. A stunning read, it questions our relationships and what we really know about the people closest to us. And it actually says on the back, not suitable for younger readers. So this is obviously aimed at older YA readers. So yeah, I'll be interested to see how that one goes. I do like a, a good thriller, but not, I um, haven't read a lot of YA thrillers, so we'll see how that one goes. And then another thriller that I picked up, but this is an adult thriller, is Dear Amy by Helen Callag Callahan, Callaghan, Callaghan, yeah. So this is one that I've seen hanging around quite a lot. Again, I think it was published last year, 2016, yeah. Um, this says on the back, a local schoolgirl has been missing for weeks when Margot Lewis, agony aunt of the Dear Amy advice column, receives a letter. Dear Amy, I've been kidnapped by a strange man. I don't know where I am. Please help me, Beth and Avery. This must be a hoax, because Beth and Avery is another young girl who went missing 20 years ago. As more letters arrive, Margot becomes consumed by finding the sender, and unlike the police, convinced that the girl's disappearances are connected. Solving this puzzle could save someone's life, but could it also cost Margot her own? That sounds really intriguing. Um, yeah, we'll give that one a go, see how it goes. And then the last two books that I picked up are both the Anne Moriarty books and I found them both in the same charity shop. Um, I have one other Leanne Moriarty book on my shelf and I think that's Big Little Lies and I still haven't got around to reading that um, so I need to get around to doing that. But I spotted both of these and they were in absolutely fantastic condition. They don't look like they've been read because the spines aren't cracked at all. So I've got The Husband's Secret and I've got Truly Madly Guilty. I think this one came out last year because I saw this in my local supermarket and I was thinking about getting it. Um, or paperback came out in 2000 and, 
17 um yeah and then i didn't and then i found it for a pound so bargain this one um says this is a story which begins with a barbecue by the end of it a lifelong friendship will be in tatters a marriage on the rocks and an innocent bystander dead in just one evening six lives will change forever so there's that and then I've also got the husband's secret, and this says on the back, mother of three and wife of John Paul, Cecilia discovers an old envelope in the attic. Written in her husband's hand, it says, to be opened only in the event of my death. Curious, she opens it and time stops. John Paul's letter confesses to a terrible mistake, which if revealed would wreck their family as well as the lives of others. Cecilia wants to do the right thing, but right for who? If she protects her family by staying silent, the truth will worm through her heart. But if she reveals her husband's secret, she will hurt those she loves most. So, yeah, they sound really good. Um, sort of contemporary mystery sort of books. Perfect for summer. Um, I've got quite a few books to read for summer. Um, but yeah, I thought I would give them a go. And I've been hearing some great things about Leanne Moriarty's writing on BookTube lately. So we'll see how they go. So there you go, guys. They're all the books that I picked up in July. Um, let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these and what you thought of them. I'd love to have a chat with you. Thanks very much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.